This Ebola outbreak is now the second largest in history. Bashar al-Assad's forces have made major gains in the Aleppo area in recent Migrants scramble to reach the shore, jump out and run across the beach. So do you really feel that the world is actually going shit right now? Now if you have that feeling, then probably this is time that we all read the book called The Factfulness. Factfulness. Anyways, this book is written by Professor Hans Strassling. This dude was really popular on the internet. I mean, he has a bunch of TED Talks. He also has a BBC documentary as well. And not only that, his life has been really amazing. I mean, in his early part of his life, he served in a country like India and Africa. And then in, in later part of his life, he became a statistician. So this book is actually a compilation of all of his life experience. So let's look at one of the favorite plot of Hans Rosling. Our life expectancy was like close to 30 years. After industrial revolution, Europe and America, they start to see rise in the life expectancy. We do see a couple of tips during the first and second world war period, but after that life expectancy continues to grow. And after 1990, we truly see the rise of Asia. Because country like China, and then later on after 2000, country like India is now finally catching up. So now if you look at it from 1800, when we started around 30 to 35 years, today we are living like fucking 70 years. Now this is a remarkable achievement. Did you see this vertical line? This vertical line is representing the extreme poverty. Now in 1800, you would see that most of the world is actually living in the extreme poverty. Now look at today, this number is actually pretty close to 10%. And not only that, during 2018 estimates, this number could be as low as like 8%. Now if you want to track the world poverty, you can just go on worldpoverty.io and you can see how your country is doing. Now remember, the goal here is to eliminate the extreme poverty by 2030, like 0% by 2030. So each country has been given their own goals. Now if you see, a country like India is doing actually amazing work. It's just beating its target by far. Now conventionally, the economical status of a country is defined whether a country is developed or developing. So Hans Rosling suggested that economical status of a country has to be defined by a distribution which actually spreads across four different levels. Now, since I'm making this video and since you are watching this video, then it's a pretty high probability that we are pretty close to level number four. We should consider ourselves really, really lucky. Since the life expectancy is really high, there is obviously the population explosion now, especially in the last 50 years. Now, if you see this line, this line is actually going up. Now, does it mean that it will continue to grow in, in this fashion? That is to say that population will just continue to explode? Well, probably not. This graph will eventually saturate. You know why? This is probably one of the most important plot you will ever see, the fertility rate plot. Now, on the y-axis you see fertility rate, which is number of kids per woman, and on the x-axis you see the time period. Now, in 1965, each woman used to have like five kids by average, and today that number has dropped to 2.5, and this number, will continue to drop significantly. Once the birth rate goes below 1.8, 1.7, then population cannot grow. And therefore, our world population will saturate somewhere around 11 billion people. Now, are these too many people to handle right now? Well, it's a matter of debate. If everybody lives on level number three, then probably we have enough resources to sustain the world even today. But if everybody wants to live at level number four, probably not. Now, I think one of the important questions we need to discuss is why the fertility rate is dropping across the world. Well, 
it is mainly due to the economical status. Now there is a clear trend suggesting that if the economical status of the country improves, the fertility rate drops. This is regardless of the culture, this is regardless of the religion as well. Let's come back to the main point. Let's look at the various metrics. Number of countries with slavery, number of oil spills, number of HIV infection, child mortality rate, number of deaths because of the plane crash, countries where you see the child labor, number of nuclear arms, ozone depletion, number of children with malnourishment. All of these numbers are actually declining rapidly. Now on the other hand, number of science publications, literacy rate, number of countries with democracy, the child cancer survival rate, number of girls in the school, electricity coverage, the coverage of immunization, all of these metrics are improving. These numbers are actually going up. Then why do we have that constant feeling that something is getting worse, that something is just not improving? Maybe because we are feeling, probably we are not thinking. Now, hand Strasling is definitely not suggesting that world is some kind of rosy place where all problems are solved. Obviously, we have enormous problems that we need to tackle. However, I think we sometimes we just need to step back and put things in perspective. Now, sometimes any bad accident can appear way more sensational than slow, boring, incremental improvement that has taken place in the society. Most countries, girls today go to school as long as boys, more or less. Right? That doesn't mean that gender equity is achieved, not at all. And to me, that's what Hans Strasling is suggesting in this book, which is we need to just put things in perspective by numbers. Now, numbers are boring. However, without numbers, we cannot actually describe the unbiased truth. So therefore, next time when an activist or news channel or even politician, when they try to drive your emotions by raising issues such as this, we just need to step back and think, do I really have data to suggest that this thing actually matters? 